Flying Swiss on the Airbus A220 could be the best business class product within Europe. But one thing went wrong on this flight from Zurich, Switzerland to Gothenburg, Sweden. The complete Swiss business class experience today on Marcus Travels. We'll start by getting to the airport. This is one area where Swiss truly shines. Because you can book a train connection with your flight ticket. I'm departing today from Basel in northwestern Switzerland. Welcome to the Basel SBB train station. Let's go up the escalator and find track number 8 for our TGV train over to Zurich main station. The train ticket is valid the whole day and even the day before. If you have a train connection on arrival, it's valid the whole day and the day after. This means you don't have to catch a specific train, which is miles better than what Lufthansa offers in Germany, for example. If your flight is in business class or first class, your train ride is in first class. From the Basel SBB train station, there are direct trains to Zurich airport every hour. But I prefer to connect via Zurich main station. That way I have a train every 20 minutes or so. The ticket is valid for both routings. Welcome down to track number 8, where we are awaiting the arrival of the TGV Lyria train. Just this train connection alone is a reason to fly Swiss over Lufthansa or KLM on this route to Sweden. The journey from the Basel train station to the Zurich main station is just under one hour. From there, it's around 10 minutes to the Zurich airport train station. And the flight from Zurich airport to Gothenburg Landwetter will be one hour and 35 minutes. I paid for this flight myself and filmed without the knowledge or permission of Swiss. That way you get a non-sponsored and authentic travel review. Welcome to my channel, Marcus Travels. For the connection from Basel to Zurich main station today, I chose the French-Swiss high-speed train TGV Luria. Because it came from France, it was delayed by 6 minutes. Pro tip. Don't expect trains from abroad to be on time even in Switzerland. Another pro tip. Don't travel on Fridays. There were far too many people here today. Welcome to a completely packed TGV Luria over to Zurich. I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of filming on this particular trip. Luckily, I have a lot of other footage from this train that I've done in the past that I'll be able to recycle. The seats on the TGV Luria in first class are big, plush and comfy. There's good space for bags, but the toilets are pathetic. I have a whole separate video coming out soon about the TGV Luria from Paris to Basel. Hit subscribe if you want to be notified of that and other great travel content. We are arriving at Zurich main station with a delay of about 7 minutes today. That means that I'm gonna miss the scheduled departure, but luckily there's another one to the Zurich airport in just a couple of minutes. From Zurich main station, there are both commuter train and long distance trains going to Zurich airport. I picked the intercity train today. Welcome on board the intercity train from Zurich main station to Zurich airport. I made myself comfortable here in first class on the top floor. This specific train is new. It's modern, it's elegant, it's bright, it's very comfortable. There's plenty of light and luggage storage. After 12 minutes, we arrive at the Zurich Airport train station. It's located under the airport, so just take the escalators up. Normally, I would check in here at check-in area number 3 at the airport train station. But they're doing extensive renovations at Zurich Airport, so the business class check-in is in check-in area number 1. That's located one more level up. This is a dedicated Swiss check-in area, currently serving only first and business class passengers. My beloved Osprey backpack splits into the main compartment that I check in and the day pack which I take as hand luggage. Check-in is complete. There was a little bit of a wrinkle in the process. Now it's done. Let's walk over to the priority security line. I had a small problem with my ticket, which meant that I had to walk across the hall to the ticket counter before I was able to check in. It's kind of an interesting story. I might make a separate video about it or add details in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to learn more about how Swiss handles, let's say, irregular booking requests like mine. 
I got through security, it was lightning fast as always, but I'm a bit stressed. I have scheduled a live stream from the lounge in less than 10 minutes, so I need to find my way over there and get everything set up. Let's see if I'm gonna be able to make it. If that live stream happens, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description of this video. With my business class ticket, I have access to the business class lounge near the A-gates in the Schengen area. This is a nice modern lounge. They have seats down here in the entrance area, but most of the lounge is upstairs. Here they also have bucket loads of Ricola, a typical Swiss cough drop. On the other side of this fence is the Senator Lounge for Star Gold passengers. The business class lounge has a good selection of drinks with and without alcohol. The salad buffet is well stocked and there's hot drinks of course. The feature that stands out in this business class lounge is the live cooking. This is where they prepare your meals in front of you in the middle of the lounge. There's different kinds of work areas. This is of the high table type. Around here you can also get chocolate mousse and other desserts. There's plenty of seating available and then there's this. It's a kind of a conference room with a big map of Switzerland in the middle. The lighting in here is very dim, so I don't think this space is really for working. Or maybe I wasn't supposed to be here at all. The rest of the working area includes printers and copiers, and then there's these phone booths where I did my live stream. This lounge has plenty more to offer, for example, a whole upstairs resting area. But at this point, the Swiss staff told me that I'm not allowed to film in the lounge without permission. So let's recycle some footage from the Senator Lounge next door. The upstairs looks very similar to the business lounge. I was unhappy that they told me to stop filming. However, I'm not going to hold that against Swiss too much. Because thinking about this limitation from the perspective of the average traveler who doesn't create content, this is not going to affect you and your trip. It did dampen my mood though. As a result, I also chose to film with my phone for the rest of the trip. Let me know if you can see the decrease in quality. That was certainly not the best lounge experience of my life, unfortunately. Oh well, let's go to the gate. We're boarding today at Bravo 34. No, it was Bravo 43 instead. The gate just behind me. Zurich Airport is a really beautiful airport. The Bravo gates are downstairs. Here on the left you can see the passport control that you have to pass if you want to go to the Delta gates. There's another couple of Swiss lounges there too. Zurich Airport is so quiet. This cart just glides past silently. There's no honking or beeping like at some other airports. Here's an example of the opposite from LAX. On this clip, I have the audio on. Yes, you hear some children playing, but it's still very peaceful. Despite all the drama, I'm still very much looking forward to flying this A220 up to Gothenburg. The A220 former C-Series is such an excellent short-range aircraft. I made it to gate Bravo 43, where our beautiful Airbus A220 is waiting. This is the aircraft that was launched as the Bombardier C-Series. Swiss was in fact the launch customer of the Airbus A220-100, formerly CS-100. The Airbus A220 is my favorite short-haul aircraft, and I'll explain why when we're on board. Today I have priority boarding in group number two. I really like these jet bridges with the transparent walls. On board, all seats on the A220 are laid out in a 2 plus 3 configuration. In business class, you get the same economy class seat, but the seat next to you is blocked off. Welcome aboard, this is Swiss flight over to Gothenburg. I made myself comfortable here in seat 2. There are movable dividers between the classes. This is typical for business class in Europe. Today the divider is placed behind row number two and we only have two passengers in business class so we both get a whole row to ourselves. Waiting for me at my seat are a pillow, a bottle of water and a wet wipe. These seats are really elegant, I love the style. They're also very comfortable. 
Unlike many other slim intra-European seats, these have an actual headrest. That adds a lot of comfort. There's also a full-size bin for your bags, not the miniature bin that you would get on some regional jets. The A220 is a full-size aircraft. The leg space in the seat is decent for a flight of 90 minutes. In front of me, I have the table and two phone-slash-bottle holders. In the literature pocket at the top, there is the safety card, the buy on board menu for economy passengers, the in-flight shopping offers, and an ad for the Swiss magazine, which is now fully online. There are very elegant and minimalistic coat hooks on the side of the seats. Above me, I have lights and individual air vents, great choice Swiss. There is also a mini display. This is where they show the safety video and the flight map. Boarding and takeoff today was delayed by around 25 minutes. That's not very typically Swiss. But many other aspects are. To this I count the beautiful and efficient airport. And the crew, who were professional and courteous throughout. And this includes the ground crew. To someone from North America, they might come across as a bit reserved. And this accurately represents the culture. I love it. I don't like my service too chatty anyway. The taxi to the runway was only a minute or two. Zurich Airport is so efficient. After takeoff, I was offered a blanket, and that was great, because they kept the cabin very cold here in late February. Getting a blanket is one of those small details that I would not have expected on a short flight like this. The meal service starts with snacks and drinks. The food and all the drinks are included in the ticket price. I use the table of the middle seat for the drinks. The meal today is small, it's more of a snack, but it does come with bread, a dessert and cheese of course. It was really tasty and beautifully presented. You also get real metal cutlery with the Swiss branding which I appreciate. You can pull the table closer to you for more comfort. Let me give you some bonus content here. On the way back from Sweden, I flew Swiss business class from Stockholm instead, on their Airbus A320. That was a two-hour flight instead of today's one and a half hours. On that longer flight, there was a much more substantial meal service. This was a hot meal, a good portion of meatloaf, served with an appetizer, dessert and cheese. The tray even came with a real cloth napkin. I had the Swiss red wine with this, it was served chilled, which I think is not ideal for red wine. On both flights, I was offered a tea or coffee at the end, but I did not partake. As for entertainment, well, they're not gonna play any movies on those tiny overhead mini screens, and I did not check if there was Wi Fi on board. The lavatory was kept clean throughout for the two business class passengers we had. There's hand lotion and face spray, there's a bin. We have tissues and a toilet. On the wall there's a baby change table and a sturdy and well-designed handle. This angle is a good choice. The vertical door handle on the Airbus A220 is a bit unique. The door also features a coat hook. The lighting in this lavatory is very good. The thing that stands out in the Airbus A220 lavatory is the space. It's excellent for a narrow body aircraft. Here you see me sitting on the toilet and under the sink there's all this extra space for my feet. It did not feel cramped at all in here. This is a man spread friendly lavatory. The only thing that's hidden is the paper towels. They are located down here. Now you might be wondering what is a face spray? Hit the like button if you're enjoying the video. Thank you for doing that. As we come in for landing, let's talk about the price and the value proposition of the Swiss intra-European business class product. I paid 568 Swiss francs for this open jaw return flight. That's around $650 US. This was a mileage run. 
I needed some 2,000 miles to re-qualify for my Star Alliance Gold status, and this was a convenient way to do it. In other circumstances, I would not pay that price for what is essentially an economy seat. However, I think Swiss does a lot of things to elevate the experience in comparison to other European carriers. Here are five examples. First, getting to the airport is so convenient with the train, with excellent flexibility and frequency. Second, Zurich Airport is magnificent by European airport standards. Third, the lounges are one step above the competition with the live cooking and the modern design. Fourth, the food on board stands out. The alternative on this route would have been Scandinavian Airlines, SAS, and there you just get your food in a cardboard box. Fifth, I love the additional amenities in the lavatory. Not every airline has them. Many people would consider Turkish Airlines to be the best business class product within Europe. And for the hard product, yes, because you get a big recliner instead of a slim seat. But for the service, for example, Swiss is much friendlier. Turkish Airlines also does not fly the Airbus A220, which is an amazingly comfortable and well-designed aircraft. I will recommend one more video to you. If you got value from this one, please subscribe. And there's also other ways to support just below. For example, sending a super thanks with the dollar sign button. For more Swiss in business class, click or tap the screen here. That's my full review of their best long haul aircraft and a proper business class seat. In fact, the best seat they have. Thank you very much for watching Marcus Travels today and I will see you in the next video.